Okay, in this tutorial, I'll be talking about how you can take input from console using the scanner class. Scanner is a library class that's available in the standard Java library, and you can of course use that in your program. Now, the Java library contains hundreds of thousands of classes, if not more. Now, they are organized in packages. You need to understand what a package is and why should we use a package. Later on, I'll be showing you how you can create a package and you can put your own classes in the package. That's the standard recommendation of Java. So let me first create a project for this in Eclipse file new and Java project. I'll name this project as input test. And here's the project. Now you can see that SRC node is there. Under SRC node, we need to create a class, right clicking on SRC, new, class. And I'll name the class as input console or input from console. I'll hit that checkbox to create the main method. So hitting this checkbox, public static void main will actually tell the Eclipse to write the main method for my class and here it is. So we are all set to start writing the code. But before I could go ahead and show you how to use the scanner class in order to input data from console, let me explain something about packages. In Java, a package is used as a logical container of a class. We put the classes inside of a package. The primary benefit of having a package is that it resolves the name collision. Let me explain it. Say, in a project, you create a class and named the class as a student. And in the same project, your colleague created another class and named his class as a student as well. So there are two classes in the same project with the same name, student. Now, if a third programmer refers the name student, which class it's going to refer actually? There will be collision. This is what we typically call a name collision. Now, in order to resolve this name collision, packages are used. If you put your student class in a package, then that will be in a different package than the other student class, which is created and placed in another package by your colleague. Okay, so if a third person is referring to your student class, we'll actually refer the student name using the package name. And if they want to refer the other student class, they will use the other package name. So in this way, package helps to resolve the name collision. So you can create more than one classes with the same name, but they has to be placed in different packages. Now in Java standard library, if you look into that, you'll find there are hundreds of packages. They, they are standard packages and they contains all the standard library classes physically. A package is actually a folder. If you look into your hard drive, you'll find that what you have defined logically inside a program as package is practically a folder in your hard drive. I'll show you how to create a package of your own and how to put your class within a package and all about the class path and the access qualifiers that comes with the package that you must know in Java. So I'll have the tutorials on those topics as well. For for the time being, we just need to understand how the classes are organized inside the package and how we can use a class which belongs to a package in our program. So if you just expand your project, you'll see that Eclipse has associated the standard system library of JDK with your project. And if you expand this, you'll find all these standard packages there that belongs to standard system library of JDK. Now, if you expand this Java base, you'll find the mostly used packages, the common packages that we mostly use in our program. Now, among all these things, okay, among all these, pro all these packages, the most common classes which are used in any Java program are kept there in the lang package. So you'll find a package named java.lang. Now, Java is a package that's the top level package and under which there is a package named lang. Let me find it out quickly. Here it is. You can see that the first one there. Here, here it is. So all the common classes like this 
string class or that system class that we used in order to print something into the console all these common classes which are mostly used in any java program they're kept inside this lang package so that java is the top level package under which lang is another package and under the lang package all these classes are there okay now physically if you look into your hard drive you'll find that lang is a folder and java is another folder inside the java folder we find the lang folder there and inside that lang folder all these classes dot class files are kept so this is the standard java.lang package now we are going to use the scanner class that belongs to the java.util package now all the java standard library classes they are categorized and placed inside different packages according to their nature of working now if you are looking for a class to create graphical user interface then you can find the suitable class there in the javax.swing package now this javax top level package was supplied later on with java 2 version earlier with java 1 version when java was launched only the java top level package was available so the java x we typically refer it as the extended java package was introduced with java version 2 that means 1.2 now, if you go ahead with the Java programming, eventually you will be habituated with the classes, with the standard library classes that we frequently use, and you'll understand, you'll memorize to which package they belong to. Now, if you're using a smart IDE like this Eclipse, then you just don't need to remember your classes exactly which package to which package it belongs to. Eclipse is going to resolve that implicitly. You just don't need to worry about that. But you need to know the name of the class or you need to find it in any way by searching Google or somewhere else or by looking into the tutorials that this is the class that you need for this purpose. Say for example, if you need a class to create socket, then how you can create that what's the class available in the library you can search it in the google and can find that there is a class indeed named socket in the java.net pack package and in this way we actually find out the suitable classes by going through the tutorials or the tutorial materials or video tutorials or any other resource books that these are the suitable classes available in the library in order to do certain works okay so much talking let's now go ahead and import the scanner class so the scanner class is given in the java.util package and we must import that scanner class before we could use that scanner class. If you are using a class from lang package, you just don't need to import that class using the import statement. The lang is the only package that gets imported implicitly by the compiler. So when we are using this string class, we just do not need to provide import java.lang.string because that gets imported implicitly. Now you can be specific like this that I have done or you can be general like this. Now if you are doing this import java.util.star, then you can use any class of the util package. Okay. Otherwise, if you are using like this then you are entitled to use only the scanner class of util package now if you want to use another class of util package you need to provide another import statement like this say i want to use the calendar class of the import of the util package then i need to provide like this okay otherwise if i just use import java dot util dot star then instead of writing these two separate import statements i can use only this one now which one is preferable we prefer to use the previous one we prefer to be specific all the time because that helps to understand a program that makes that increases the readability of the program because looking into this program i can instantly understand that the programmer has used the scanner class and the calendar class in this program so this is a better way of importing otherwise you can go ahead and use that general way by writing import java.util.star so that's all about the fundamental details now let's go ahead and use that scanner class in order to input a value from keyboard now First of all, in order to use a class, what you need to do is to construct the object of that class. A class 
is a template that is only a declaration that contains some methods, some variables or something like that. They are only declared is inside the class. Now you can make a class really functional by creating an object of that class. Unless and until you create the object of a class, it's not going to be that much functional. So objects are real instances. They are allocated in the memory. Now, in order to create a, an object of that scanner class, what do you do? We use the new keyword. Now that new keyword dynamically allocates the object in the memory. And what you need to do, you may need to supply some information while you create the object of some class. Here, when I'm creating the object of this scanner class, I need to supply from which source this scanner object is going to scan the value. Now there can be many different sources. We want to use the keyboard as the source of information from which we want the scanner object to scan the value. But in some other occasion, you may need to scan value or read value from a file, from a text file. So in that case, you'd require to supply the text file name as the source of the scanner object from where the scanner is supposed to read. But for the time being, we want to use this scanner object to read from the keyboard. So in Java, system dot in is the standard reference to the keyboard. Now we are supplying that to the scanner object while creating the scanner object. This scanner object that we have just created using the new keyword will actually have the keyboard as its source. So later on, when we try to read, it will actually read from the keyboard. Let me explain a little bit by drawing a memory diagram there. That S1 that we call a reference of the object. Now that S1 is the reference to the scanner object. In Java, we create the object using the new keyword and the new keyword allocates the object. So this is the scanner object and that contains various methods. Those we can use in order to read the values and this S1 is actually referring to this object that we just created. And you need this kind of reference. Okay, without this reference, you cannot access these objects. Now you can create any number of objects if you wish from the same class. So if I want to create another scanner, I can just do that like this. New scanner and I can make uh, the source of that second scanner a file like this. New file and the name of the file. Just don't worry about the new file like that. Okay, so what I'm doing here in the line number, at the line number eight is that I'm creating a second scanner object and it's having the source as a file. So when this second scanner object is created, it's actually having its reference there in S2. So S2 is, so that S2 is pointing to the second scanner object and that is having the source as file a.txt. So if we use this reference s2 and fire the read method, it's going to read from this file a.txt. When we use this reference s1, it's going to read from the console. So you can create any number of objects. If a class is given, you can create any number of objects and each of these objects are going to contain all the functionalities that is written there inside the class. Okay, let's now use that scanner object S1 in order to read the value from keyboard. So I'll just give a prompt to the user to input a value. I'll use a print method. Now the difference between the print and println is that print do not have a new line character appended at the end, but println, yes, it does. If you are using println, a new line character is implicitly appended at the end. So I'll ask the user to enter their age and I'll declare a variable age and I'll use that s1 to read the age and the method is next int. Now this next int method is going to wait for the user input. Now when the user is going to type in some value and hits the return key, this next int is going to read that and it's going to return back here in our program and that is going to be assigned here in this age variable. Now please note that this next int if you are using it then always expect 
to have integer value if the user types in a string or a double value then the program is going to crash okay so how to tackle that situation we'll understand that when we do exception handling okay but for the time being let it be simple we expect that the user they are intelligent and they are going to type in only integer so that this next int is going to read that integer and it's going to return that here in this age variable so if you're using that s2 that i declared earlier at line number seven with a source file s2 dot next int then that's going to read a, an integer from that file that's how these things works now if you want to read a double value then you can use that next double okay this is the method that's going to read a double value from the keyboard so if you're interested of reading a double you can use that so you can find next float in order to read a float value or you can use a next line in order to read a text that means a string so if you want to read the name then you can use next line and you can declare a variable as as a string and you can take the name in this way so let me just display that age first and by executing this program so your age is and let me run this program so here you can see it's waiting and if I type in something like this 45 and if I hit the return key so it's accepting that it's reading that so this is how you can create the object that new keyword it's important it's the way mechanism of dynamic allocation in Java in Java every object has to be created using this new keyword if you have a class you need to apply that new keyword to construct the object to allocate the object and then you can take the reference and assign that in a reference variable as i did here s1 is a reference variable that is actually referring to the object now any object in java they are anonymous if you are using like this the object will be created but you have not taken the reference assigned in some variable in some reference variable so you cannot use that object anymore later on so if you want to use an object then you need to keep the reference in some reference variable you can declare the reference at one line and then use that later on in this way so here we are actually creating the object and assigning that to this reference variable s1 so i understand that this was a long video tutorial but i had to tell you a lot of information and i hope you have understood all these things there and they are really useful thank you for watching this join me in the next tutorial